Hi, I'm Paul DiGiuseppe. Many of you may remember me as former manager of service training at Max, the Mobile Air Conditioning Society. We're here today to bring you a program from Honeywell on servicing R1234YF systems. And this is program number three in a series of three. Specifically, what we're going to cover in today's program is U.S. EPA certification, the certification that you need to legally work on mobile AC systems. We're going to touch on SAE spec J2845, and we're going to end things up with an on-card demonstration of an actual service of a 1234YF system using a recovery recycling recharge machine. One of the questions that came up when technicians started to hear there was going to be a new refrigerant used in vehicles is, am I going to need a new or different certification to legally work on these vehicles? If you are already Section 609 certified, you don't need to recertify or get a new certification. However, at the request of vehicle manufacturers, there is some additional training that you may want to take advantage of. That additional training is covered in the requirements of an SAE standard, SAE J2845. Once again, this standard was put together by SAE at the request by vehicle manufacturers. They want to make sure that technicians who are going to work on R1234YF systems, you know, recognize that, you know, number one, it is a 1234YF system. The differences between R1234YF systems and R134A systems make sure they employ the proper safety procedures. One place that you can get the training is MAC's newest Section 609 certification training program. It meets the requirements of SAE J2845 and includes all the information outlined by the SAE standard. Another question that comes up is, do I need to be certified to purchase R1234YF? Well, as of January 1st, 2018, Certification is going to be required to purchase any automotive refrigerant in a container larger than two pounds. Another question that technicians have been asking is, do I need to learn new procedures to work on these systems? What are the differences between working on an R134A system and an R1234YF system? As far as operating pressures, component operating temperatures, um, the way most of the equipment is used, you're going to be seeing some differences, uh, especially in the operation of recovery, recycling, recharge equipment. But as far as the actual um, pressures, temperatures, things of that nature, essentially not much of a difference at all. So what are you going to need to work on an R1234YF system? You're going to need to acquire a few pieces of equipment, and it looks and operates similarly to the equipment that uh, you're used to using when you work on an R134A system. One thing that I guess you might say is an optional piece of equipment is a standalone gauge set. Obviously, you don't need these if your machine has gauges built into it, your recovery, recycling, recharge machine, but just a, a nice-to-have piece of equipment. But there are a few items that you are going to have to have and they specifically are going to be an, an electronic leak detector that meets SAE spec J2913, as well as a refrigerant identifier that meets SAE spec J2912. Now, this is if your machine, your recovery recycling recharge machine, doesn't have one built in. Many of the new triple R machines have these built in. If you already have one built in, you don't need it. But if your machine doesn't have one, you're going to need a standalone identifier like this one. Now, if you have any question as to whether the, the equipment that you're going to be purchasing meets these SAE specifications, just take a look on the piece of equipment and it will be labeled as such. Lastly, concerning the actual recovery recycling recharge machine, an R1234YF specific recovery recycling recharge machine needs to meet SAE spec J2843. There are machines that do, dual refrigerant machines that do R134A and R1234YF, they must meet SAE specification J3030. Now, speaking of recovery recycling recharge machines, one difference that you are going to notice when using an R1234YF spec machine versus an R134A machine, it's going to require you to perform a few more operations. What that means is, before delivering a full charge to a system, it's going to perform a vacuum decay check and a system pressure test before it delivers the full charge. So essentially the way it works is, 
when you begin your recharge operation, it's gonna do, it's gonna pull a vacuum on the system and it's gonna do a vacuum hold. It's gonna hold the vacuum for about five minutes. If the system passes the vacuum hold, the machine will then deliver 15% of the program charge to the system. Now, while this is going on, the machine will prompt the technician to take your electronic leak detector and place it on the floor inside the car, operate the blower motor with the system in floor mode. If the leak detector did not trigger with the 15% added to the system, then the machine will go ahead and deliver the remaining 85% of the charge to the system. Now, the reason why this is all being done is essentially to uh, protect the uh, environment and to protect the integrity of the system as well as that of the shop owner and the technician. So let's go to the car and we'll demonstrate some of the things we've talked about using a J2843 spec recovery recycling recharge machine. So let's start off with the label. What we'll do is we'll work our way around and show you the different nomenclature on this label versus what you might see on a vehicle equipped with an R134A system. Starting off right here, this is something that you've seen not just on a vehicle with an R1234YF system, but on any vehicle equipped with an electric cooling fan. Always be careful to um, keep your hands away from the fan because, as you know, these fans can start at any time. Once again, our little uh, caution triangle warning you to always be aware of safety procedures, shop safety when you are working on any vehicle. Now we're going to get into the things that really apply to the R1234YF vehicle, starting off with, of course, the vehicle is labeled as being equipped with R1234YF. This particular vehicle, it's a Dodge Journey that we have right here, could be equipped with either a 2.4 liter four cylinder or a 3.6 liter V6. This vehicle is a dual a climate control system, dual evaporator system, but uh, gives you the nomenclature whether it would be a single system or a dual system and the different refrigerant charges that would be required. Continuing to work our way around right here, J2845, the SAE specification that we've already spoken of, the technician training spec that the vehicle manufacturers would like technicians working on these systems to take advantage of to make sure you are up to date with the newest service procedures needed to safely and properly work on R1234YF systems. J2842, our next SAE standard, that's the one that applies to the evaporators. And what that is indicating is that any replacement evaporator for this vehicle, of course, as the vehicle came from the factory, it's already equipped with a J2842 spec evaporator. That is indicating that any replacement evaporator for this vehicle must meet that SAE spec J2842. These evaporators are constructed uh, what you might say more robustly than evaporators that were used in R134A systems. SAE J639, uh, that's an all-encompassing standard that applies to all vehicle AC systems. That goes uh, way, way back, uh, even into the 60s. And it's a general safety procedure SAE spec concerning pressurized um, AC systems on a vehicle. Our PAG designation. Now, this vehicle uses polyalkylene glycol oil or PAG oil, the same way R134A systems did, but this is not necessarily, most likely is not the same PAG oil or the same type of PAG oil that would be used in an R134A system. So you must make sure that any replacement oil that you use and a vehicle equipped with R1234YF does use indeed the proper lubricant for that exact system. Lastly, two more things we're gonna point out. Two little pictographs we have right here. Little technician wearing a little metal on his chest showing you that anyone working on this vehicle needs to be trained and certified to be able to legally do so. And last but not least, our little flame a pictograph or flame icon indicating now, this is something that you didn't see on an R134A label that indicating that the refrigerant uh, is mildly flammable. So the cautions that you need to keep in mind when you are working on a vehicle equipped with R1234YF.
So now we're going to begin our recharge process, and this is where you're going to see most of the difference between recharging a vehicle with an R134A system versus one with an R1234YF system. I'm going to select uh, the recharge icon, which happens to be the third one down right here. Need to select the continue arrow. The machine's going through its air purge process. The machine is asking me if this vehicle uses a high voltage compressor, uh, as you would see on a vehicle like a Toyota Prius or many other hybrid vehicles right now that use electrically operated compressors. It does not. This is a belt driven compressor on this vehicle, so we need to just let the machine know we don't have a high voltage compressor. The machine is telling me to make sure the hoses are connected to the service ports, which they already are. We're going to continue. This machine gives us the option of charging through either the high side port, the low side port, or both. We are going to charge through both ports. And we're going to continue. The charge spec on this vehicle, the label spec, is 1.93 pounds, dual evaporator system, so 1.93 pounds. Continue arrow. Here's one of the differences that you're going to see when you are recharging with a, a J2843 spec machine or a J3030 machine that before the machine will deliver refrigerant to the vehicle, it is going to perform a vacuum check and a vacuum hold. It wants to make sure that there are no leaks in the system before it delivers any refrigerant to the system. So that's what the machine is going through right now. So the machine has completed its vacuum check, and here's where you're going to see another difference between recharging an R134A system and an R1234YF system. Before it will add any refrigerant to the system, it also performs a pressure check. And how it does that is it adds 15% of the program charge to the system, and then it's going to ask us to activate the blower motors to clear out any possible residual refrigerant that may have collected from a possible leak. So we're going to operate the blower motor on low speed, and then it's going to ask you to use an electronic leak detector into a floor vent, and it's going to ask us, did the leak detector trigger? If it did not, we're going to tell the machine it did not, and the machine will add the remaining 85% of the charge. So now we're going to proceed with our electronic leak detector check. As directed by the recovery machine, I'm now going to perform my front evaporator leak check. I already had the vehicle controls set to low blower speed number one, the air directed to the floor in the mode. So I'm going to activate my electronic leak detector, and I'm going to go inside the vehicle, insert the probe into the lower right floor outlet, and let the detector sit there for a few minutes doing its thing. We've completed our test with the electronic leak detector. We're going to tell the machine we have done that. We found no leaks, luckily, so we're going to tell the machine that as well. This vehicle does have a rear evaporator. We've also performed that check. We're going to tell the machine that no leaks were also found there. We're going to proceed through. So now the charge process is going to complete. Our charge is completed and the machine has delivered 1.93 pounds of R1234YF to the vehicle. One last thing we need to discuss. The US EPA has granted emission credits to vehicle manufacturers who are using R1234YF. At that, removing R1234YF from a system and replacing it with another refrigerant would be considered by them emissions tampering and is a violation of federal regulations. As mentioned previously, this is one part of a three-part series brought to you by Honeywell, which brings you information on R1234YF, 
there are some additional resources that you can take advantage of, as well as Honeywell's smartphone app that brings you more information about their refrigerants. I'm Paul DiGiuseppe. Thanks for watching this program on R1234YF Systems.